Hello. So uh, in this video, uh, we're going to introduce uh, the basic Rhino interface as well as some of the sort of prep work best practices that I usually do uh, before either starting a file or start working on the computer, uh, especially in the lab. Now, uh, one of the things I want to point out first is that I'm running here the 64-bit version of Rhino. However, um, Brazil Render, which we're going to be using in lab a little later on, is only installed in the 32-bit version uh, in the lab. So uh, just to kind of make sure, and it doesn't really make a huge difference, uh, you can transfer between the, the sort of two versions uh, easily. So it doesn't matter if you start your workout working in one version and you know, need to open it in the 32-bit version to render. Okay? But just know that you won't actually find Brazil on the 64-bit version that's uh, installed in the lab. So this is the basic, basic interface. Uh, there are a lot of similarities, as you can see, with uh, this and uh, AutoCAD. Uh, I guess one of the biggest differences you'll see is that the command line, instead of sort of being at the bottom, is now uh, top in the top here. And you can pull this to either make it more or less. And this is important because you'll be wanting to watch the options in the command line here a lot. Okay, So you want to get in the habit of looking at things uh, because this is basically Rhino will sort of tell you what's going on here. And so in some cases you might actually want, want this to occupy a little bit more uh, desktop real space than it is by default. Um, so obviously, you know, sort of on the top, you'll see all the tabs and options. On the left, you'll see your tool palettes. Um, there are a lot of, you know, as you can see, there are a lot of different tools. Now, I almost, uh, for the most part, I almost never use these on top. Uh, it's just a sort of personal thing. Generally, uh, you'll find that getting to commands is much, much faster if you just type them, right, instead of sort of poking through uh, this. So I usually, usually just leave this at the sort of standard uh, toolbar on the top. Um, these tool palettes, you'll notice uh, there's a couple behaviors you want to get used to. One is that you can always hover over them a little bit to get uh, the first command and you'll kind of know okay what this is. The second thing is uh, there are often two commands in the same button. So when you hover over it, you'll see a little icon. And in this case, for example, if I click on, if I left click, it'll actually give me the polyline command. And I'll, um, which is, that's the polyline command. And, uh, but if I right click, then it'll give me the line segments command. So, and these are individual line segments instead of a polyline, right? So that's the sort of big difference with that a lot, not all, right? So you'll have to kind of take a look. A lot of these uh, will have you know, one or two different commands you know, tied to each button or icon. Uh, the second thing you kind of want to notice is really that some of these icons, besides this sort of default, you know, select uh, button here, uh, in the lower right of some of these buttons, there's a flyout uh, arrow, basically. <clears throat> and if you click these flyout arrows, that allows you to get into some of the more uh, embedded commands. And you'll be using these commands a fair bit. Um, and so it's actually a pretty good idea to kind of dig through or just sort of know that, okay, this is how I get to these commands. Especially, for example, um, the ones that are associated with the curves here. And what often I'll do is uh, if I know I'm going to be working with a specific palette, like, you know, the surfaces one, uh, I'll just pull it out like that, right? So just look at it again. You'll click on the little arrow, let go. And then once it's sort of in this flyout mode, you can grab the top of that uh, menu and drag it out. And essentially, this toolbar you can sort of put anywhere if you want. Uh, you can actually dock these, but I usually don't because it just sort of has a tendency to mess things up. 
Okay, but uh, this is sort of at first. After a while, uh, it depends. But you know, after a while, some commands you'll just sort of actually get used to their keyboard uh, shortcuts. Okay, so remember that there's that. A lot of these all have their own sort of commands. So there, you, as you can see, <clears throat> there there are a lot of commands in here. Um, but you'll be you'll sort of get used to just the ones that you use uh, the most. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, um, there are basically four windows uh, right now by default. This is the default uh, sort of view. Um, top, front, right, and perspective, right? Now, obviously since it's a 3D program, uh, in SketchUp generally you don't have this. SketchUp you just have the one sort of perspective window and you kind of change the views to make it, you know, orthographic. Um, in our case, uh, or in the case of Rhino, you, you have the different views and they all will sort of cross uh, correlate. Now, this should be uh, the default behavior, but basically if you click on the perspective itself, it should maximize that window. And you click it again, it should zoom out or you know basically go back to the form view and top, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the other way to kind of really navigate around, for example, if I'm in this sort of perspective view, I can switch to the top by using these tabs that are on the bottom. So right, front, top, perspective. And uh, I can add my own by clicking on this little uh, plus sign. But I, you know, generally you won't necessarily need to do that um, for the most. Part. Okay. Now. While these views sometimes can help in very some very specific situations, for the most part, I would say get used to moving around in the perspective view. Um, it's often, you know, kind of the most useful. Um, it can be tricky at first until you get used to it, but once you get used to it, it's actually pretty pretty fast and pretty easy to use. So if you maximize the perspective view. Um, and I'll sort of talk about navigating in Rhino uh, in particular. So one of the things that you'll notice as uh, compared to SketchUp or, you know, uh, SketchUp has its sort of rotation um, on its middle mouse. Uh, in Rhino, it's the right mouse button. So left mouse button is the selection key, uh, sort of by default, it's the sort of selection. Um, and it has the same uh, crossing methods that you see in all, pretty much all CAD uh, programs. Upper left to lower right is you know, boundary selection. Uh, lower right to upper left is crossing selection. So keep that in mind. Um, right mouse button is rotate. Right mouse button plus shift. If you're holding down shift is the pan. So that's pretty simple. Uh, and of course the scroll uh, is the zoom button. Now the middle mouse button uh, in particular is something I actually changed the defaults on. Um, and so this is where I'll kind of go into some of the things that I always, always, always change uh, in uh, the sort of Rhino viewport. And your background color might be different depending on your settings. So. And this actually is a is a sort of uh, example. I think that's really good to know. And so, if for example, if I copy a couple of these, so selection works uh, the same way. You know, if you just sort of cross someone, it'll select everything. If you boundary select, it will only select things that are completely within the boundary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, my middle mouse button is binded or I change the binding to something called zoom select um, zoom selected so if I select something and I click my middle mouse button it'll zoom me to that object like this All right and um, I think this is a great 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 time saver um, so to kind of change this you have to go to tools options or you can just type options uh, the nice thing about Rhino is that uh, whenever you execute a command you can actually see the uh, verbose command here. So uh, as you're kind of learning specific commands through here, because one great way of learning new commands is just to kind of hunt through things, look at the icons and try it out. 
but you also kind of learn to kind of read that and basically remember what its sort of uh, text name is. So in here, I'll just uh, in the options, I'll go to the mouse, and this is your default uh, sort of uh, setting. The middle mouse button brings up this completely utterly useless uh, <laughs> toolbar. Uh, I don't know why particularly they would want to do this, but yeah, so change it. Options, mouse, run this macro, and here you can just type in ZS. This is the shortcut for zoom selected. And you can actually, if you, oh, for some reason your middle mouse button isn't working, you can actually select something and just type into the command bar. And when I say into the command bar, you don't actually have to move your mouse over here. It's just like wherever you type, it will basically assume you're entering commands. Okay, so ZS, and then you can enter or spacebar. So ZS basically does the same function. It zooms to your selected. Now, if you select multiple, then it will basically zoom into frame, you know, multiple objects like that. And so it's really uh, helpful, actually, really in, in terms of a kind of zooming into details or getting around the scene, especially, you know, if you have something that's sort of really, really far away. You'll notice that in this case, for example, uh, the zoom selected also resets your your um, orbiting center, right? And so in this case, uh, if I zoom into here, the center of rotation when I'm sort of orbiting is basically the volumetric centroid of whatever you selected. And if I select more and zoom, then okay, that's the sort of rotating. Now, but in this case, for example, I have something, some geometry that's really far away. Uh, it gets kind of hard and see, like it's really difficult to navigate with it, right? Because the rotation uh, center is like way, way, way far away and you move a little bit and it just sort of goes out of your view, right? So in those cases, it's just easier to like select it and zoom over, right? So it's sort of almost like this sort of teleport thing. And another sort of uh, shortcut or trick I use a lot is just to control all, basically select everything and then zoom select to kind of get an idea of like where is all the stuff in my model, right? It's easy to kind of lose things, lose things from time to time, and this is actually a pretty good way of doing that. So you kind of know, okay, that's the furthest, furthest thing. You can move it back, all right? So that's uh, the basic uh, navigation. One thing I want to talk about really quick is this guy thing down here called the gumball. You might have noticed that when I was moving things around, uh, I was actually using these arrows. So this thing is called the, the gumball, and it's sort of to kind of assist and help you move things around. And you can turn it on and off this way by just clicking on the gumball uh, sort of icon on the very, very bottom. And this just shows you what's on and what's not. Grid snap, as always, should be always off. Um, there's no particularly good reason why you need it. Uh, ortho, you know, turn, turn it on and off depending on what you do or what you want. So the gumball here um, is a sort of three-dimensional uh, movement device and it's really, really nice. Um, as you can see, per normal 3D program uh, convention, the red arrow basically constrains your movement to one direction. And uh, right now I'm sort of clicking and holding down. So this is click drag, right? Um, if you just drag on objects themselves, <coughs> you can move them around easily, but they're not constrained, right? Basically, and they will sort of stay on the XY plane or the sort of horizontal horizon, right? Um, but it's a little harder to move them precisely. This is kind of a way to help you move precisely. So in this case, I can click drag and make sure that, okay, I'm only moving on this axis or I'm only moving, if it's the blue arrow, I'm only moving in the X, Y axis. Now, just to kind of show you uh, what it looks like, you'll see that when you're moving things, uh, basically the view will update in all the other viewports as well. So you can actually pretty 
clearly understand, you know, the sort of other, especially the vertical x, the z height relationships between things. Control z is always undo undoes um, your movements. Okay. Now, um, however, in terms of moving, there you can also uh, move uh, precisely. So in this case, if you just single click on the blue arrow, right, and actually you'll get this sort of text input, and I can put in, let's say, 10. So it will move upwards 10 units in that direction. And so in this case, you know, 20, it will move uh, that many units in that direction as well. Um, the other thing I want to point out here is that depending on your viewing angle, um, you will see this sort of little plane pop up. And so if I go to like this view, you'll see it's it's a blue and green one. In this view, it's a blue, uh, it's a green and red one, and it, and vice versa. So depending on your view, this is a something that's meant to kind of help assist you basically move things on that plane. So generally you won't need help moving in this this sort of XY plane, but you might need help if you're moving in the sort of XZ plane, right? Because so this is basically constrained to the vertical plane um, that's sort of sandwiched in between the blue and the green axes. So those are the sort of planar constraints. At the same time, you'll see these arcs. And these arcs are there to actually help you rotate. So I can actually just grab, and this is also click drag. I can just grab and rotate objects this way. Um, if you want to do it intuitively or arbitrarily, this is how, and you can just let go. Otherwise, and I'm just going to undo it. Otherwise, you can click on any of these arcs themselves and actually turn dial in a specific degree number, so 45, for example, and it will rotate it 45 degrees. And if you click it again, 45, that basically is 90 degrees. Another behavior to remember is actually when you're dragging this, you can hold down the shift key, which will rotate it in 90, basically constrain it to 90 degree increments, which can be really, really useful. Okay, so that's basically, you know, the shift in, in many, many cases is the sort of constraint. Um, so besides that, you'll also see uh, the third sort of element that's within the gumball really are these sort of grips that are at the end. And these are the sort of nonlinear scale uh, grips. So you can scale the object in one direction or the other. And if you hold down the shift key, that constrains it and makes it a uniform scale in all three axes. So non-uniform, normal, just dragging the ends, and then hold down shift to make it uniform. But to be honest, for the most part, and you can still dial this in. So if I make this, you know, twice as wide, so two, this is a, a scale factor. It'll make it twice as wide. And if I hold down shift, It'll make it twice as big, right? So just remember that there's like dragging behavior, but then there's a sort of text entry behavior uh, associated with it as well, right? So that's the gumball. It's really, really useful. Um, you'll find it come into use a lot. So before we get too much deeper into right now, um, I also want to show some basic, basic settings that I, like I said, always change. And in your guys' case, um, if you're coming to the lab to work here, um, chances are you'll actually have to change some of these settings more or less every single time because when you log out of the virtual machine um, basically in the lab uh, these things get set back to its default okay so take a look at these settings um, make sure that you kind of change them because they'll make your life easy a lot a lot, lot easier uh, but basically all this stuff uh, especially is in the sort of modeling aid section here and um, especially basically smart track. So mine are already on, but this, these are the settings you basically want to have. You want smart track to be enabled, these dotted lines to be on, uh, implying from smart ortho, smart tangents. The only one I have off is parallels because it's a little less, uh, actually, it's a little less useful. So 
take a look at this, make sure, and you can pause the video, but just sort of um, tick these boxes. And then cursor tooltips should be enabled, O snap distance point and command prompt. And so that way, this way, your sort of Rhino settings should behave a, a bit more similarly to the way mine uh, are. And these are just like settings that I've been, I've been using for quite a while and I found them to be really useful. And you'll sort of get used to it um, and hopefully you'll uh, agree as well. Okay, so make sure that these uh, these might be settings that you always uh, kind of have to redo uh, whenever you sort of log out, log, log back in uh, to lab. The other thing I personally I change is really here uh, under Rhino Options Appearance. And uh, you can change some of these if you want, but really the colors. I personally just like the gray background. Some people like the uh, sort of gradiented background. So, you know, it's... This is a completely uh, personal preference thing. But in particular, the one thing to note is to be careful of your selected objects color. Your selected objects, as you saw when we were selecting objects in the Rhino viewport, it was it, were, it, it gets highlighted in this yellow. Um, and basically, you kind of want to avoid having your either your UI elements or uh, yellow layers, basically because yellow layers make it very, very difficult for you to actually tell if you're selecting an object or not, All right? So I'll either just leave this as default, it actually, you know, even if you're used to a different color when you give someone else a file, um, it might confuse them because they'll spend, you know, two hours figuring out what the hell is going on, all right? So, you know, this is one of the layer colors generally I would actually avoid because uh, it's the way Rhino kind of displays how things are selected. And then uh, the last thing here in the sort of interface part I would like to point out is actually, let's see, here. So under this thing called aliases, um, these are where basically all your keyboard shortcuts are. Now yours is not going to look like this by default. These are mine. And um, the big difference is that I change a lot of the key bindings to basically uh, things that I use more. And um, I think, for example, by default, the polyline command, uh, I think, is PL. I'm not sure. Um, but basically, I change the, my L to polyline instead of PL because there's almost no reason for me to use the normal L, uh, the normal segmented lines. So. Uh, for example, my keyboard shortcut for polyline is L spacebar, and so whatever I draw with this, it's uh, it's a polyline. Um, and so there are some things like, for example, extend is EX is my extend. Uh, sort of, you know, let's see, TR is my trim, so TR, and I'll trim things off this way. For example, right? So you can see basically that you can actually really customize things to your liking. Um, and I, that's these sort of aliases is how to do it. And it's very simple. Um, you'll see that, okay, you know, in here, and this is my list, but, you know, for example, extrude is E for me, uh, extend is EX, um, intersect IN, and I have a duplicate here. I should probably take it out. Um, M is move. Right, so instead of M O minus M, because it's just faster, um, and there's just like some things that you you'll find that you use more, especially when you're kind of uh, working with specific projects, right? So R in my case is rotate, R three is rotate three D, which I use a fair bit, uh, things like that, and. Uh, the way to kind of set this up really is to basically, you know, say there's a command that, that, that you think you'll be using quite a bit, you know, let's say um, the sky surface from planar curves. If I click it, you'll please notice that this hovering sort of name, command name, surface from planar curves is different from the text name. So this is a planar surface, right? Planar surface. This is the one that you want. And so you can basically just like execute the command, for example, and just uh, actually come out. You can highlight it like this. 
and copy it just control C and uh, let me see what my PS is bound to okay I don't have any bound to PS so options aliases and then click new right and in the front new alias I can just type PS and here copy or paste the planar surface here and say okay and that's it and so and I guess because planar surface meant for planar curves basically if I type PS spacebar then I can click a planar curve and then make a surface out of it make sense okay so that's kind of like how you uh, that's that's how you set up an alias if you find yourself just like using this command over and over and over again uh, then a, it's a good idea to set these up here and uh, get used to it basically now here's the important part right um, once you have specific aliases set up and actually just let me delete this right now um, you will need to basically save this file uh, it's a very simple text file so let's say you you're slowly working on things and you have your settings or you have your aliases set up to something that you like then all you have to do is come here and export it and I'll export it to my desktop and say Lee Rhino aliases txt right and save it they'll say that okay um, and if I go to my desktop to find this file basically this is what it looks like it's just a comma separated well it's not comma separated but it's just a text file with this format right and just remembers all your aliases now what I do with this is I either put this on Dropbox so I can access it more or less anywhere or I stick it on my USB drive and just take it with me wherever I go and when I get to a new computer or uh, like the lab computers when you log in and everything set back to default well all you need to do is come here go to the options aliases import and go to the desktop and find this and it'll import and these will be basically set to whatever you're used to basically All right and so that's super super quick and uh, convenient so even if you're moving to a new computer, a new uh, uh, desktop, or someone else's laptop, this is what you do to kind of get your settings back. So whenever I start working on a new computer for any reason, I import my aliases, I go to the mouse, you know, change this to zoom selected, I go to the modeling aids and make sure sort of these things are set to uh, my liking. Say so, okay, and you'll feel basically more or less uh, right at home. Right? So that's the sort of basic uh, setup and you know, you know, basically time-saving tools and tips that you know, I've sort of uh, accumulated um, over the use of this program. All right.